a playoff races to monitor leading up to Sunday's regular season finale already. So which guard tonight, as we start our building block segment, has building block potential, Waylon? Well, there are a few. Uh, when there's 24 teams in action, there's going to be a few directions to look. I, you know, I find myself gravitating toward Kyrie Irving on this slate. He's expensive. He's at 10,600. He hasn't been quite as good uh, as he looked as a part-time player. Uh, maybe you know having like six days between games was was actually beneficial to him. But gets a really good matchup against the Houston Rockets team that is 30th in defense, 29th in pace uh, since the All-Star break. And it hasn't really mattered who the Nets have matched up against because they're not that good of a team right now, other than Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. You know, this is like a C-level supporting cast. So even when they're playing teams that maybe don't have quite as much top-end talent, they're still able to hang around. It, that, that's resulted in Kyrie Irving playing 40, 45 minutes even, um, you know, on a, on a near nightly basis since he became a full-time player. So for fantasy purposes, that's been fantastic. Uh, if you want to go a little bit cheaper, a couple other names I like. Darius Garland gets a good matchup against the Orlando Magic. Devin Booker at 9,300 against just a pitiful Los Angeles Lakers team. CJ McCollum, 8,700, goes up against a good matchup in the Kings. And then on the other side of that Houston-Brooklyn matchup, Jalen Green, 7,400, four straight 30-point games for the number two overall pick. He's been over 41 DraftKings points in five straight games. Uh, and the Brooklyn Nets are a bottom 10 defense since the All-Star break. A lot of, lot of choices here, Fryer, in the guard department. Who's one that you are definitely going to build around? You know, what's funny is there's a lot of choices, but at the same time, Nick and I are in lockstep on this one that we both Ooh. like Kyrie Irving. He's the one that jumps out. He's getting more minutes, and I understand full-time player not doing as well, but he's, we're still seeing that volume. He's going up against a bad team, you know, and now no Seth Curry tonight as well. Um, you know, you obviously you hate to see the Nets trying this whole rotating roster over the course of the season and see it not work out for them at all it, again another thing that just breaks my heart today um i guess that's the theme but I, I, you you brought up darius garland nick and to me karis lavert is actually the guy that i want to roster in that game get a little bit more savings of course when we're looking at the, the high price guys i understand garland being there but lavert you know they still need to have guys scoring and he's been stepping up a little bit of late um in the Cavs, you know we talk about teams needing to play for something i know the Cavs are in a really bad spot we thought they were going to make you know be a good team in the postseason and all these injuries have made it kind of tough we'll see how they bounce back physically with allen and, and mobley but for right now they got to lean on lavert and they're still trying to fight to at least have that that top spot in the playing tournament